Right, okay guys, welcome to another 8-bit phase of Kerfuffle. This week I'm taking a look at vector based game Mercenary. It was uh, programmed by Paul Wokes, at least the original was, I don't know about the other conversions, and released by a company called Novagen. And it was quite a quite a kind of a sort of a sandbox type game. I mean you had missions to do but you know it was quite quite a sort of a, a radical game for its time, you know, you could you could virtually go wherever you wanted, you know, within within the game sort of confines. But uh, yeah it was a, a very, very popular game back in the day. So this little bit here, this is the sort of automated sequence you're about to crash. You don't actually control any of this at all. Sorry, I forgot to say, this is actually the Amstrad one. I was actually surprised to see it was released for the Amstrad. I knew it was, I think it first came out on Atari, then it was ported to the Commodore 64, and then I knew it came out for the Spectrum, but I didn't realise that it was also out for the Amstrad. So here we go, I've now crashed. And I can now walk about. Yeah, this little computer, he can he talks to you, gives you tips, and can he keep keeps you right as to what you need to do. Now I believe in the game there was there was missions you could un undertake, there was two sides, was it the Palomars and whatever it was, I didn't actually see that there. And there's you can take sides and you can do missions for you know, you've got to decide what side you're gonna take. But I mean, vector graphics back then were quite—they were quite out there. You know, they're quite revolutionary for their uh, <laughs> for the time. You know, looking at them now, they do look very, very basic. But back then, it was like it was the first sort of a 3D that we'd ever seen. I mean, obviously, we had things like Battlezone and that kind of stuff. But you know, to actually play a game like that on the home computer was quite—it was quite an experience. I did buy it. I never actually got very far into it, which is no surprise to anyone that watches my channel. I just tend to give up the games far too easily. Too heavy, what the earth? Now there's various keys you've got to press, so I'm just... Alright, okay, I've now boarded the, the ship. Ah, that appears to be fire. How do I take off? How do I move? My speed's currently at zero. Message from Palliars, job offer, yes, here you go, they're going to offer me a job. And to get more information, you've got to fly to a particular bit. Now, you can see their location, it shows you I'm currently in sector 8 8. Now that's me firing, how do I actually move? It always pays to read instructions, but I don't read instructions, you should know that. Right, okay, you press the number keys, right, I'm now moving. So this one is actually quite impressive, it's quite smooth, you can see there the way the graphics update. Yeah, I mean look, looking at the game now, it looks, it looks barren, there's completely nothing in it, but you know, ah, right, I can take off as well. But for a, a game back in whenever it was, 1985-1986, it was quite a revolutionary game. So you can see there the sectors changing, I'm now in sector 05, 09, 10. I didn't actually pay any attention as to where I was supposed to be going, but... So yeah, actually the, the update on this version is very, very smooth, so it does give quite a good feeling of movement. Someone's coming up. I'm going to crash. 
Yeah, it looks like I have. Right, anyway, that is the Amstrad one. Right, moving on, we're going to take a look at the original one. This is the Atari 8-bit. Again, it starts with the same little intro. Ah, listen to that sound, that's what you want. Real beefy sound. This this little intro was actually quite a unique thing for games. I never really saw intros in games. I don't think that was really a thing at that point, but So I'm now plummeting towards a planet. Maximum reverse thrust. It ain't gonna stop me crashing, I'm afraid. Yeah, this 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 gave you some sort of you know, some sense of scale of the actual uh, Play world. Boom! <laughs> right, good landing. Ah, very good. He's been sarcastic. So this was the original one. The graph, the graphics look a wee bit chunkier, possibly. I don't know. Maybe not. State of war between the. Palyars and Mechnoids, that's what it was. Location near air base. So let's go up to this little thing, aircraft. Dominion Dart. Message received. Craft for sale. 5,000 credits. How many credits have I got? Oh, I've got 9,000 credits. So it's basically Surrey of its time. Do you want to buy? Yep. So you press the Y button to buy. Transaction completed. I've now got 4,000 credits. And to board the craft, you press B. Just in case you ever want to have a shot at this game. So, I mean, graphically, there's not too much to really be able to show you in this game. Ah, right, I can shoot the structures. <laughs> That's probably not a good thing to do. What's this message from Palomar's? Alright, it's going to give me a job offer again. Yeah. But you can see how similar the Amstrad, was, the Amstrad one was to this one. So 9-6 is where you can get a job offer. So basically you have got little structures, they're all very, very basic. But like I says, you know, this was this was quite a remarkable game. Based on the, the, the technology it's running on. I mean this is probably running on something like 30k. Which is less memory than like a the Twitter logo, that's always the famous one they use when they're talking about the little memory it has. I've just destroyed Bosher Stadium. Right, okay, I guess that belo belong to the Palyars, so they're not going to be attacking me. Obviously the faster you go, the slower the bullets seem to go because obviously you're driving in the same direction as them. I'm trying to see if I'm actually getting closer to that door, I don't think I was. There he is there. Oh, he's going to hit me, I think. Boom! <laughs> Ship destroyed. Right, I'm back in my feet again. I don't know if you can actually die in a game. I've really no, no idea. You need to remember, when I played these games, it was some... It would be 32 years ago. Three decades ago. So you need to excuse... You need to excuse my uh, sort of poor memory. So anyway, that is the Atari one. That was the original version. 
Right, what we'll do now is we'll move on to another one. Let's take a wee look at the Commodore 64 one. So here we go. This is the C64. Very, very similar looking to the Atari one. The Atari and the C64 shared quite a lot in common graphic wise and sound as well. So this was the one that I did play back in the day. It's not the most exciting game to really demonstrate in a video, but it's always interesting just to, to look at different versions. Now it'll be interesting to see how the C64 handles the planet as it gets bigger, because the C64 was always notoriously not very good. Ah, see that's alright, that's not bad. Let's see how smooth this little bit is. Is it mega jerky or is it okay? I don't think that really, really varies too much from the first two versions we've looked at. Well, possibly. I don't know. I don't know. Boom! Here we go again. Right, you crashed. Now, I've got to say that's, that's alright. That is alright, actually. Crash landing on target. Yeah, I mean, the C6, that's actually turning fairly quick. The Commodore 64, like I said, it was always absolutely panned for being rubbish at doing any sort of 3D because the processor is slower than all other machines, other 8 bits. But I think this was the one game that really it bucked a trend, it proved that the C64, if programmed properly, could do vector graphics. I mean, Elite on the C64 was probably the jerkiest of all the versions, but, you know, this just proves that it could, it could do it. Alright, let's, yep, let's buy it. I would imagine making some sort of map in this game might have helped. Well there again, even just noting locations. Yeah, that, that thing's turning nice and smooth. I'm actually quite impressed with that. <laughs> See, that's what I would have done. If I'd been playing this back in the day, I would have just shot things and destroyed things. and. Probably not got very far in the game, but it was always much more fun to be bad in these things. Yeah, I don't know if that white dot is something you can actually get towards. I don't know what that bit of the side is comp. I don't know what that is. You got your altitude, you got your speed. Is that some sort of... is that some kind of a... Uh, like a radar of some sort? Or a, a compass, that's what that'll be probably. There certainly weren't too, uh, too many vector games on the C64 that I can remember. I mean, the one that... the first one that I ever bought was a uh, Stellar 7, which was kind of a, a battle zone clone. I'm sure it was uh, US Gold or something released it, I think. The only other games. There was uh, obviously Star Wars and there was also Elite and uh, Battle Zone. There was a Battle Zone as well. So yeah, that's the Commodore 64 one, that isn't actually half bad at all, I was expecting the worst, but I've got to say, you know, I don't think, I think it holds itself up pretty damned well compared to the other options, uh, the other uh, versions, 
So right, the last one I've got to look at is on the good old Spectrum. Let's bring it on. It's funny, you can always tell Spectrum game. I think the lack, the lack of colour. It's only got is it eight colours or something. It's, you know, you can always tell Spectrum one. There we are, and it's got that beautiful Spectrum sound. I love that. <laughs> Now the Spectrum was always pretty good at uh, vector graphics, so it'll be interesting to see just how this actually plays out. That sound effect was one of the few sp uh, sound effects that you got in most games, the early sort of Spectrum games, until eventually they decided, or they, they actually got to grips with the hardware and they realised they could actually make different sounds. It was always pretty generic -y. Spectrum sounds, that being one of them. Right now, that's... That was quite a bit quicker than other versions, I think, and a bit smoother, and that is definitely smoother. Yeah, that's quite impressive. Ah, I see what they've done there, they've actually got... It's, that's, Strange, rather than solid lines, they've got little dotted lines. I wonder if that was to to sort of keep the speed up, possibly. Pal yards and mech noids location near airbase. And let's go and jump in the Dominion Dart. See, after you've played a few versions, you get to know what you need to do. <laughs> Craft for sale, price 5,000 credits. Yes, please. <laughs> no, it's 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 quite nippy. This one, I would say, is definitely the nippiest version out of all of them. Hey, yeah, there's, there's people, I've had a few people comment on my videos from, I think, these, the States where the Spectrum wasn't really a thing. In fact, I had one guy who was basically slagging off the Spectrum, saying what a pile of shite it was compared to the Commodore 64. But then, here you go, you take a... You know, you need to, you need to overlook, yeah, the actual Spectrum hardware itself, the keyboard was pretty rubbish. But the actual hardware inside was pretty impressive. Yeah, it was a game that was played very much in silence. <laughs> you know, it could have maybe used some music. I dare say for the, the C64 they probably had to use all the processing power just for the graphics, so maybe that's why you didn't get any sound. But maybe it's just the atmosphere of the game, you know, you're on a, a deserted planet, you're not going to get music playing. <laughs> Anybody recognise that? <laughs> it's Atari sign. Good show. <laughs> I suppose you would class that as an Easter egg nowadays. But yeah, that's that's the Spectrum one. I've got to say, I think all four versions I've looked at are pretty damn good. They've all got their strengths and weaknesses. I mean, I don't think there's a poor version at all. Um, for fluidity and speed and smoothness, I think probably the Spectrum's the nicest. Um, well, maybe for colour and, you know, the other three versions, but 
pick the one that you want. They're all really, really good. Um, it is a really good game. This is I'm not doing a very good job of showing the game off here, but yeah, that's it, guys. That is mercenary, and as usual, thank you very, very much for watching.